Now, this year marks a decade since the largest ever outbreak of Ebola, which killed more than 11,000 people in West Africa. The three main countries affected were Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea, where the outbreak started. It left around 20,000 children without one or both of their parents. The BBC's Caroline Loyer has been to meet two teenagers in Western Guinea to find out how they managed to cope with the loss of their parents at such a young age. Kadiatu's life is now one of normality and stability. But in 2015, her world collapsed when Ebola tore through her family. I've lost 11 family members. All in the space of a few weeks. The Ebola outbreak in West Africa started here in Guinea at the end of 2013 before spreading to Liberia and Sierra Leone. In three years, 11,000 people died and more than 20,000 children lost one or both of their parents. Kadiatu was nine years old when she contracted the virus at the same time as her parents. And it wasn't just a disease that was destroying communities, it was disinformation too. People would say that if you go to the hospital, they will sell you, they will kill you. But if you take the medicine, you will die. So I would refuse to take the medicine. And it was this Ebola survivor who managed to convince Kadiatu to take a medicine and eat. Mama Isata was a volunteer at the hospital. Ebola had taken her husband, one of her children, and almost her as well. She wanted to make sure that patients were listening to medical advice, so they too had a chance of survival. After she got better, Kadiatu wanted to go home to live with her siblings, but some in her family were convinced she was still contagious and refused to allow it at the time. Eight years on, the pain is still raw. I was suffering and they didn't accept me. I would never forget what they did to me till the day I die. It was Mama Isata who gave her a home, along with four other orphans. When I took in these children, it was difficult because they were always thinking about their parents. Because of the epidemic, they could not attend the funerals. They kept asking for their parents. It was hard, but I was able to comfort them because I went through the same thing. We went through it together, and now we are strong together. In the region of Forecaria alone, Ebola left hundreds of orphans. I have lost my father, two uncles, my mom and a sister. Ibrahima was 12 when he was taken in by his grandmother. But like Kadiatu, he also suffered rejection. People wouldn't come near me. They would even back away. Even my friends here didn't want to play with me. Today, beliefs in the community have changed. Ibrahima says he no longer lives in shame, but the memory of his parents is always with him. I think about my parents every single day. When I see parents playing with their children, memories come back. Sometimes it even makes me cry. A heavy absence, but he says he's now hopeful for the future. I want to finish studying to then help my grandmother the way she helped me, because she is my mother and my father. She is my everything. Caroline Loyer, BBC News, Forêt Caria, Guinée.